Good morning, St. Luke. Today is by far my favorite day of the year. I get more excited for this day than on my birthday. As a sports fan, I get more excited on this day than on the Masters weekend, which I love to watch. I get more excited than Super Bowl Sunday on this day. You might be asking yourself, well, what's today, Pastor Ben? Today is the first day of the NFL Draft. This is a day months and years in the making. You see, I have a special rule for myself. I know you're going to call me a crazy sports fan for doing this, but today is the first day that I get to pull my Vikings jersey out of my closet and wear it again. You see, I have this rule that I can only wear my Vikings jerseys on Sundays when the Vikings are playing during the season, and then when they lose their last game of the year, including, I know, all of you out there thinking to yourself, those four Super Bowls that the Vikings won none of, after they lose their last game of the year, I have to wash it and put it in my closet on the shelf, and I can't pull it back out again until the first day of the NFL Draft. You might be thinking to yourself, whoa, this is overboard. <laughs> what do you even like so much? There's just a bunch of random names that are going to get announced tonight. Let me tell you, the process of the NFL draft is a years-long one. Teams have been scouting players sometimes since even they were in high school. They go through a whole process of trying to get to know a player. There are medical evaluations that happen. There's the scouting combine where they make players go through drills and run drills and see what their physical abilities are. They do interviews with the players one-on-one -on -one to try and get to know their personality, to see how competitive they are, to see what kind of person they are, to get to know their character. You see, these NFL teams are going to make significant financial investments in these players, and to the best of their ability, they want to know thoroughly the person who they will pick, who they will draft tonight. You might be wondering... What does this have to do with a devotion? Why would we talk about this? Look with me for just a moment at Psalm 139. This is a psalm of David, and David writes these words, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Your life, your faith in Jesus is so much more special so much more indescribable, even than an NFL draft, as silly as that is, what this psalm reminds you today is that not only are you fully known by God, every thought, every word that's on your heart, before you go about your daily business, the Lord knows what's coming. Not only are you fully known by God, you are fully loved exactly as you are. How beautiful is that? You know, to be fully known but to not be fully loved, that is our deepest fear as people. To be loved but to be not fully known, that's superficial. That's really not true love at all. What you experience in your relationship with God is so much more. It's both. God has created you. God knows you. He cares for you. He provides for your needs right as you are, just as you are. Without one plea, the Lord cares for you today. Lots of men tonight are going to hear their names called and they're going to put on the jerseys of various teams. And some of them will work out and some of them will not. Some of them will bomb out of the league and will say, why would they have possibly chosen those guys? They can't even play football and some will be great. But you experience that very same thing in your life of faith. In the past 10 days at St. Luke, just last week, there were three separate baptisms. 
You see, you and I are brought onto God's team. We're brought into his family, and we wear a uniform, too. We share something in common. You see, that's why I'm standing where I am in my office. You see my Viking stuff here, but then you see the crosses on my wall as well. These are important to me. You see, when you were baptized, for those who were just baptized in the last three weeks, we don't put a ball cap on them or a jersey on them, but what we do say, what is done to them, are hearing the words, receive the sign of the cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Dear friends in Christ, you have been chosen by God. You are loved by God. You are on a team. You are brought into the body of Christ with fellow brothers and sisters who love you, who care for you. So listen to these words, these familiar words from 1 Peter. But you, dear Christian, you, member of the family of faith, are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I remind you again today, you are a part of a team that's much more important than any sports team on earth could be. You are a part of the chosen people of God, fully known, fully loved by Almighty God, just as you are today. Let me pray for you as you go about your day. Almighty God, I pray that you would bless the person who is watching this video today. Lord, you created them. You have searched them, you know them, and you love them fully, just as they are. Bless them this day. Reassure them of your love and your grace and your mercy. Remind them that they are a part of a team that is so much greater than anything we experience here on earth, that they have been brought into your family of faith, marked by your cross, who have received your promises and holy baptism. Keep them in the faith today. Encourage them by your word. We pray in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you today.